So first, let's have a look about the main components related with this ID circuit. The first one, U1000 CPU. It mainly performs as an overall controller of the face ID circuit. Also, it will process the face ID data. U2700 PMU. It is mainly used to provide power to flood illuminator and infrared camera. U4400 face ID power IC. It is mainly provide power for flood illuminator and dot projector. U3700 Camera PMU. It mainly used to provide power to the infrared camera. Next, let's have a look about the main connectors related with face ID circuit. J4500 dot projector connector. It makes possible the connection between the dot projector and the motherboard. J4600 the flat illuminator connector. This connector is not only controls the flat illuminator, but also control like earpiece, ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, etc. So in this circuit, it makes possible the connection between the flat illuminator and the motherboard. The last one, J4530 infrared camera connector. It makes possible the connection between the infrared camera and the motherboard. Let's have an overview about the related chips and the connectors. CPU, like the brain, for overall control and process the face ID data. PMU, face ID power IC, and the camera PMU. The three chips that are mainly responsible for providing powers to the face ID circuit. And the three connectors they make it possible the connection between the motherboard and the face ID related part. Flood illuminator, it will emit low power infrared light onto the surface of the object. So that to help the infrared camera to detect and capture the image of the object. Infrared camera, it can detect the infrared energy and capture the infrared image of the object. After that, the captured image will be sent to CPU for further processing. Dot projector. The dot projector could project over 30,000 dots onto user's face to create a sequence of deep map. And this kind of map can be also captured by the infrared camera, then sent to the CPU for further processing, like face ID enrollment or comparison with the enrolled face ID data to unlock the phone. We will focus on the flood illuminated circuit today. For detailed explanation of the infrared camera circuit and the dot project circuit, please visit Riva Academy. So let's move on to have a look about how each related part circuit works. Flood illuminator. You can also call it rustling. So in this broad diagram, we can see the CPU for overall control, the connector, which makes possible the connection between the rustling and the motherboard, and the rest of the chips that are mainly responsible for the power supplies. So let's have a look about how this circuit works. First step is power. Power always comes to the first. And here, two powers are required. PP3 volt is sent out from PMU to the Rosalind connector. Also, the PP Rosalind anode, this power is sent out from face ID power IC to the connector. When the power gets fulfilled, a feedback status signal will be sent out to both the face ID power IC and the camera PMU. This is to tell them that Currently, status, the power supply is get fulfilled. After that, the rustling should be also controlled by CPU via the I2C bus. So once the three conditions get fulfilled, the rustling will be standby to work, which could be able to emit the low power infrared light. 
Also, we can see there's two rails. These two rails are related with proximity sensor and ambient light sensor. So when the two functions are required, an interrupt signal will be sent out from CPU to this connector. So that the proximity sensor or ambient light sensor function can be activated. So this is the whole process. And here we also have a tip. The infrared light is applied to the face so that the infrared camera can clearly recognize the face in any environment. So this is the process of how flat illuminator circuit works. So first part is to find out if this face ID issue can be fixed or not to evaluate the repair possibilities. Let's see the detailed process. Okay. So when you receive the phone with face ID issue, the first thing we do is to exclude the software issue first. After that, we should also check the cosmetic of face ID related parts like the flat illuminator, infrared camera, and dot projector to check the cosmetics. Also, we should check the related components on the motherboard okay. to check if the cable is cracked or scratched and to see the related components on the motherboard to see if they are corrosion or damage or missing, something like that. If we find any abnormal, for example, if we find the flat cable damaged, we should fix the flat cable. You can choose to jump wire or swap the related chip. And this detailed process, you can refer to our blog or check our YouTube channels to find the related videos. And if it's component missing or corrosive, you should change a new cable. If everything is normal, then we should continue to observe the proximity sensor and flat illuminator work status and the infrared camera. Okay. This one, this light is invisible for the human eyes. You can only observe under the special camera like the digital camera or infrared camera to see if this light can be emitted out or not. If we find any abnormal, then it means it should be the proximity and the flood emitter problem. So we should check the related circuit or swap the flood illuminator chip to another cable. If it's normal, we can see the light emit out from the proximity sensor and the flood illuminator. Then it means it works fine. Then we're gonna continue to check if the dot projector is ok or not. And because in the portrait mode, the dot projector can emit light, so we can check in the portrait mode to see if there is any light outputted from dot projector. If yes, it means by now the flat illuminator, the dot projector is ok. So the issue might be the infrared camera. We should check the infrared camera circuit. And let's go to Reflux speed map to have a look. So we should check the infrared camera connector first to measure the each pin guide values. Okay, measure each pin one by one to see if the measured value is okay or not. If we found any value abnormal, just track the pin related components. But if we measured all the pin guide values that are normal, then we should go to check the related power supply chip for the infrared camera, it's a camera PMU so we should check the camera PMU power supplies if the power supply also ok, then it might be the camera PMU problem ok, so let's come back to here if we cannot find the light outputted from the dot projector then we should check the dot project related circuit let's go to bitmap to have a look dot projector connector is G4500 so it's the same we should measure each pin diode value to see if the diode value is ok or not if we measure any abnormal check the line if they are ok then we should also go to the infrared camera circuit to find out the root cause ok so this is the process by observing the light is on or not, we can locate the range of the problem.
Want to learn more about this idea? Start your learning journey at Rewa Academy now.